Hello and welcome to another fantastic episode of the Business Growth Accelerator. Brandon here, your Chief Business Strategist. Got a special guest with me tonight. I know it's been a minute since I've I've done an interview style uh, podcast. Been really busy over the over the summer trying to figure some things out, but we're finally back. We're going live here on YouTube. Uh, this is the replay on Spotify. But I have one of my clients here that is in the home remodeling space down in Central Florida, Mr. Charlie Corton. Charlie, welcome to the show. Hey, Brandon. Thanks for having me, man. Uh, I must say, with the uh, with the invite, it said uh, virtual coffee, and uh, you're my tech guy, and I got no instructions nor links on how to make virtual coffee. So <laughs> I must say that I'm going with the uh, regular coffee. Uh, I hope it doesn't offend you in your tech world. No, absolutely not. And you know what? Um, I, I, I appreciate you being lighthearted about it. You know, I, in getting this, uh, interview series back up and running and, and on solid ground here, you know, we're both part of the same Facebook group, um, you know, Castleberry Facebook group down there. Um, I spent 10 years down in Florida, which is why I'm part of it. My uncle lives down there, but anyway, I was like, you know what, I'm going to put it out there, uh, see if there's any business owners. Cause it was the Monday promote day. If they wanted to come on board. And I was the zero preparation and getting everything set up pro for a proper podcast funnel, uh, podcast interview funnel. And I just said, you know what? I don't have any other links. I just got virtual coffee for a one-on-one -on -one type deal for my other uh, connections. So, you know what? Just rock and roll with what you got. So if you're listening, awesome. if you're not prepared, it's okay. Just use what you got. It will work. Promise you. So again, Charlie, welcome to the show. How have things been these past couple of weeks? I know. There have been some, uh, you know, troubled times a little bit, weather-wise, political-wise. How, how are things shaking out for you? Um, yeah, we had the storm. Um, I just got back uh, last week from overseas. Uh, I was in the Philippines uh, for the third time this year. Um, I do some ministry work over there. Okay. Um, so I stay real busy with that. Um, but, uh, I mean, business has just been steady, you know, um, steady growing, uh, always busy, so. Um, no complaints on my end. I don't, I don't worry about the politics or anything like that. Uh, regardless of who becomes president, I still got to get up and build my business and, uh, to fall into the trap of it's all over, uh, is just a way to lose. So I, I, was, I choose to disengage. I hear you there and I do my best to, uh, stay out of it myself, but sometimes it's just too good to, uh, pass up to at least rile some feathers because uh, if you're not if you're not riling feathers you're not really not really living um so let's talk about the philippines that's interesting that's something i didn't know that that you did i mean i know you had some type of ministry thing on the back end because our first interaction was for me to build you a, you know a christian landing page there to drive people to um how was how was that trip over to the philippines um it was good uh you know it's really hard to complain about things in this country when you go to a third world country like the Philippines and you see how real poor people live mm -hmm. um, for the most part until you've been to the deep recesses of some third world nations uh, and pockets of this world. It's just it's devastating and it's really humbling uh, and it's it really helped me to not complain, <laughs> um, you know, but yeah, I've had a ministry there. I teach the Bible. I teach the Bible worldwide and uh because the the way my business has grown over the years, it's really freed me financially to just travel and do what I what I feel I need to do and what my calling is. You know, um, that's at, my my business actually started after I started my ministry because I I couldn't put one foot in front of the other in the beginning. I was a disaster, so I needed a I needed a big change in my life. So that was really the catalyst that launched me into this. Okay, so so let's talk about that. So the ministry led you to. Uh, the business. So what what was kind of going on in your world then that um, kind of drew you to that? Obviously, God had a had a, a purpose for you. Um, you you realized you needed the money, so you had to figure out something to get the money to then do God's work. Well, uh, <laughs> this is going to be this is crazy, right? This. All right. So uh, in 2014, the beginning of 2014, I'll give you the sum of my life. Um, I was a violent, uh, very sexually wild, um, uh, drug addict that oh. would work Monday through Friday at a job just to get enough money to do drugs all weekend in hotels and get in trouble. 
Wow. And um, I ended up on uh, April 19th of 2014 getting into a violent altercation and ended up in jail. So uh, I, I quit drugs because I was in jail, incarcerated. And uh, so 420 is my clean date, and it wasn't by choice. It's a bit, it's a bit <laughs> ironic. Yeah, I'll never forget that. So <laughs> I've been drug-free since uh, 2014, uh, April 20th to be exact. And uh, when I was in jail, I was in solitary confinement, and I was in for about a month. And I was just like, you know, I move hard and fast in every direction, in the wrong direction, and uh, something's not right. And I, I, I just decided that uh, I'm going to do what what God wants me to do, and I'm going to listen to whatever he says in the Bible, and I'm not going to listen to any of the churchy places or any of the religious people. I'm just going to deal with God, and I'm going to figure this out. Long story short, over the next six months, um, I studied and studied and studied, and I learned that uh, the only people that were ever called Christians in the Bible were disciples, and I decided I was going to become a disciple, and I learned. Uh, and on October 16th, 2014, I was baptized as a disciple, and um, that's when I hit the ground running. Uh, I had no job. I finally got a job washing dishes in a pizzeria and delivering pizzas. And um, while I was doing that, I saved up enough to buy a vacuum and a mop and a bucket and, you know, a little cleaning stuff. And I would just try to do little cleaning jobs here and there on the side of my uh, my pizza job and then was running a ministry at the same time, teaching people the Bible while I was learning. And um, 13 months in, I was making enough with the cleaning to leave the pizzeria. So I fully launched, I would say, Full time in 2016, I launched my company. It started with cleaning and handyman, and then it greatly progressed. Okay, so to to get that off the ground, what were uh, some of the uh, tactics, yeah. guerrilla tactics that uh, that you employed to to make it happen? You said it was about what 2014. So I mean, the internet was still there, social media marketing, and all that kind of stuff was there. Um, websites were, were still a thing. Uh, so, I mean, what what did you do to get the word out to uh, to grow that in 13 months? Because that's pretty so, quick. Yeah. So the the first thing um, was I didn't because I had always moved very quickly and um, failed. Um, really, to grow the way I've grown, you would think I'd have to go fast. And I really moved slower than anybody. And I learned that, you know, the race is not to the swift. I slowed my life down. So when I took a step, I won. Instead of being like a 35 and 25 baseball team, which is probably playoff bound, or a 45 and 35 uh, basketball team, which is playoff bound, if you're a 35 and 25 boxer, you're devastatingly horrible. <laughs> so, you know, my life had to be like 4 and 0, a 4 and 0 boxer, a lot, le a lot less losses, very few wins, but when I lay my hands on something, I go for it. So, um, the number one thing I did was. I made the most important thing God, and then it would be, I'm not going to make a move unless God is with me in it. I'm not going to do anything that goes against the Bible. And that cost me a lot of jobs in the beginning. You know, anything unethical I wasn't going to do. I was just <laughs> going to go straight and narrow. So the first thing was get God on my side. Then the tactics I used, I started seeing these Facebook groups. You know, you got groups in different towns. There's like 50 different groups in every town. So I joined all the groups. And then I would just read the groups and somebody say, hey, I'm looking for a cleaner. I'm looking for a handyman. I would reply. I wouldn't even advertise like, hey, I do this. I do that. When I did that, nothing happened. So I just waited for people to say, I need this. I said, I could take care of it. And um, I would book it and then go and just do a good job at a fair price. And that's all I did. I chased it wherever it went. Some days I was picking weed. I wasn't too good to do anything, um, no matter what it was, you know. I would drive all the way down. I, I lived in Orlando. I would drive to South Orlando to SeaWorld uh, to pick weeds all day or to uh, trim bushes or uh, whatever, you know, window uh -huh. cleaning. And and finally, it just grew and grew and grew into the handyman stuff. But really, the, uh, the referrals, the Facebook groups and the um, the referrals from customers is really what got me there. And you know what? If I didn't have any work, I got up every morning and I had like little job tickets. I would just get up at seven o'clock in the morning, spread out all my job tickets on the table. And I'm like, I'm in business, man. This is it. <laughs> I was obsessed with it. I would pace up and down in my house. And I, I you would think I wore dents in the tile just saying, oh, this is going to happen. Then this is going to happen. I was speaking it, you know, and I just stayed focused on it. I wasn't 
in business part time. I was a hundred percent committed, hundred percent all in, and uh, there was no you. So I chased everything. And these would say I don't have to chase anything anymore. So. Good, good, because you know you, you sowed your you sowed your field. You know early on did the hard work, and now you definitely are reaping the uh, the harvest there. Uh, but y- you knew eventually you couldn't do it alone, right? So. When when was the epiphany that you had that you had to at least bring somebody in to help a, a little bit with the operations, or uh, possibly help you at least you know spread the word other than your other than your customers? Well, believe it or not, the the I by accident stumbled upon this, and what happened was a few years ago I was doing the Facebook group thing, and it was all going good. But I was also a musician, and I would kind of sell tickets to performing arts centers, and I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing. So I got somebody in social media who like that, like you, that's all they do. And I realized that there's people that this is all they do. They drive traffic. They use algorithms and all kinds of stuff that I don't understand. I own a large company, but I don't know nothing about the tech. Uh, mm-hmm. And I and, and and he was able to help me drive traffic specifically in the music industry, which, you know, we're talking, hundred, you know, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars in ticket sales. You know, and it was something I would never be able to do. I would never be able to do it, my little Facebook group thing. So I realized that when I brought in a professional in the music industry, I said, you know what? When I left the music industry in 2020, I said, all right, I'm going to go all in on the company and really, really grow it. And um, now I'm at a point now with you where I'm going to double down with the company using the social media, but I'm doing it from a much larger size company now. So there's, there's no way I can put my feet in the water and play like this. So that's why I'm excited to have the help with the social media. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you know, it's and even speaking from like a ministry side point of it, you know, Jesus knew that he couldn't do everything alone. That's why he recruited 12 people around him to help, you know, spread that, <laughs> spread that word out. The musician thing is interesting. I, 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 I saw that from you, at least on the, um, uh, on the Facebook profile side, when I kind of got to know you there, um, what uh what what part of the band did you play? Were you the singer, drummer? I was the executive producer for Quadraphonic Surround Sound Presents. Uh, I okay. was the front man, and I did a lot of quadraphonic production work in the studio. So I, I built a um an auto audio visual Pink Floyd Led Zeppelin uh, surround sound concert with laser, and um I w- I ran the whole thing, so I had to learn the whole social media stuff and selling tickets, booking venues, and we were performing art centers and up. So uh, it was it was a pretty big operation. Um, I learned a lot, learned a lot. Uh, that really got me looking at the power of, of social media. I actually would pay somebody. I would pay somebody to do like what you do, and then they would be getting a commission based on ticket sale, per ticket sale. So it was all, it was all revenue driven. So it's like, it wasn't like a hypothetical I mean, it works. I was selling out venues. So when you get somebody that does this all the time, it's just another level. It's not like me tic-tacking around on Facebook because he right. did it across all platforms. I don't even, I, don't, I mean, listen, I'm 47 years old. I, I barely know how to get on Facebook. No. <laughs> well, I, I, I can tell you, you do a pretty good job at it uh, for what I've seen, uh, especially in the, in the same group that we're in. I mean, I catch your videos, you know, here and there and they're, they're decently put together. And, you know, that's kind of one of the things that I wanted to chat with you about. Cause I know, you know, initially when we first started chatting, you're like, Oh, I don't need a website. I just get all my groups. I put a video up and I get like 10, 20 leads. And I mean, that's absolutely phenomenal. And, and, um, you know, a great way to drive the business. The, um, the downside of that, I mean, the potential dangerous side of it is that if for whatever reason, Facebook doesn't like you one day, you lose access to it. Um, but I mean, it's working for you now. So go through, you know, your, this help other remodelers out there for what you do, like the, uh, the mindset and the, um, strategy that you go through as far as like, you know, recording what you record and, um, getting it up there. Okay. First of all, I'm a, um, I'm a, I'm a licensed plumbing contractor. Um, and I do predominantly I, I don't do any service calls anymore. I retired from that. I do predominantly bathroom and kitchen remodels. Um, I'm doing north of 60 bathrooms a year. Um, and really what we do is um, 
when the job is finished, we're just taking a nice video, a slow video going into the niches and zooming around, you know, giving really cool angles. And then all I'm doing is either uh, I'm creating a reel, adding some background music, which is usually uh, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Rush, or Yet. And I joke with my customers, if they want anything else, they got to pay extra. <laughs> That's the, the only musical creativity I have in my life. <laughs> so, and I take those videos, uh, put a little words on them, like, you know, frameless glass, slope in entry, linear drain, blah, blah, blah. Um, and I'll, when I see people asking, you know, anybody looking for a bathroom remodel, I just say, um, I can help licensed plumbing contractor and bathroom remodel specialist and i put that video up and that video stands hands above every other video out there um because i show the details of the quality of work most people show pictures or say oh yeah go see dyi handyman services and they leave a phone number people like to see things moving around i've noticed visuals you don't mm -hmm. have to make a long video 30 seconds that's about the tension span 30 seconds and you got them and then when they call me i just book an estimate with them that's it and i get in their house I don't do business over the phone. You can't get a haircut over the phone. You can't do business over the phone. So no. I get in people's house. Sure. And I think I have a couple of your videos here. I'm trying to get one up. So maybe in a, in a minute here, I will uh, show, you know, one of the videos that you put up that's actually on the uh, on the web here. So let's see. Oh, God. Uh, I, I would show you a live video of my bathrooms, but I've done absolutely no work to my bathroom. <laughs> that's, usually, that's usually how it is. The... Um, <laughs> You know the carpenters' kids have the, have the uh, or the car or the cobblers' kids have the worst shoes. So yeah, I think I think I got it. I think I got it uploaded here. I think we can go live with this. So, um, yeah, here we go. Hopefully, I don't get copyright here. I'm gonna turn the sound down because again, don't want to get copyright. Cause I know you're using Led Zeppelin and all that kind of stuff. So. So talk to me about this bathroom here. What did you What did y'all do? This is a second floor, uh, open entry, a lot of LED lighting, specialized in every last detail. This one here is a, a full wet room. It's up to the left, shower to the right. So do all the design work and um, pretty much anything the customer wants. We help them get ideas. So I'm a design specialist as well. And all my teams are internal, you know, there's, uh, I don't need to bring any outside companies in. So we're able to do, um, you know, sometimes I'll have upwards of 50 Kennedy's going at a time. So we really, really got this down to the fine oil machine. Customers let us, we push the limits and try to do some new cool stuff. So uh, we're really enjoying it. You know, really it's an attention to detail. And when we make a mistake, we fix it. Customer calls in three weeks and says, hey, this tile feels hollow. We tear it out and we redo it, you know. So uh, excellent in customer service and our standards. You can see from the video just every last detail. Uh, you know, it's got my name on it, you know. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. I mean, if you're building it, you want people to know uh, uh, what quality work is. You know, I, I personally wouldn't put anything on something like that. You know, I can hear the oh, music. <laughs> you can't hear me, so hold on a second. Um, Alright, can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Alright, can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay, so I don't know why that cut me out, because I thought you... Can you hear me? But um, no. So, how long does it take you to make those those videos? Uh, I don't even do them. My guys just go in at the end with a video. I take. I was doing them up and down on the phone, and then you yelled at me, so I started to. <laughs> well, you, so, you, <laughs> so you got to uh, do yeah. them both. You got to do them both ways. Um, yeah, I know, he, I, and I don't know why. I just know that you want them that way. And you know what? 
I don't need to know why, because you're the pro. <laughs> you're the one getting people out there. So whatever you want. It's very simple. We just we try to go slow. We do a 50% zoom out. Uh, one thing I notice, if you do a before video at regular zoom, you know, and it looks like blah, blah, blah. But when you do the after, do a 50% zoom out. And for some reason, it just makes it look so much cleaner and nicer and more professional. And uh, we just, we walk into the room to give the experience and we just make sure to pan around and go in and try and keep yourself out of the mirrors and stuff as best as possible out of the reflections. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, just really going through and picturing music sweeping through the room. Um, you know, really, people are very visual, you know, and that catches people's eyes, that video. So uh, I, I put that video up maybe a month and a half ago and uh, I can't tell you how many bathrooms I've gotten from it already. I probably got at least 10. Yeah. And, you, you know, we know bathroom remodel, uh, you know, remodels aren't inexpensive. You know, we're talking five, five figures at least there. So for 30 seconds, you know, the, it's, it's a no brainer to get the content out there to promote your business. And even if you don't have a site initially and want to uh, invest in one, I mean, social media, YouTube shorts, TikTok reels, things like that, those are still powerful mediums to, uh, to at least get the word out initially but then have a place later on to, you know, drive them to, to, um, solidify the, uh, the deal. Cause all that stuff, it's, it's good top of funnel, uh, marketing and it's getting people to, uh, to act and, re and react. Um, but ultimately you definitely want to build that, that list out and retain those customers for long-term marketing, uh, with, you know, email marketing, direct mail and, and the like there. So what's the, uh, What's the next evolution for Charlie Corn Services and, and CK Baths? Um, I, I think, I think the next thing really that I'm focusing on is um, scaling the company to a level where, and branding it, okay, where where I can market it, and if I wanted to sell it, I could when I retire, mm -hmm. um, and that's really the where where you came on board. And what I've had in mind, it's like, yeah, now getting business and everything like that, but you could do all the business in the world. If somebody came along and said, how do I know you're going to do business? Well, now I got, I'll have the website. I got, I got you, I got all the marketing out there. Um, I got the track record. Um, so just having a real, it's like, I mean, do I have to say McDonald's? If I show you a yellow M, it's marketing genius, you know, right. it's just, that you get the you get the swoon so Nike you don't even need the that's that's the branding and that's what I'm uh, excited with with you is to have the branding to really scale the company to what it what what I see um um so far you know we've grown twenty to thirty percent a year um in some years we've doubled in size so but we're averaging twenty to thirty percent growth a year um. And uh, it's been exciting. It's been a real hoot. You know, I mean, I, I remember I remember pacing in my house saying, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And I'm going to do this. And then da, 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 da. And after after a month, it'll be seven thousand dollars. <laughs> and I didn't know what to do. I was like, we're going to go on a cruise. We'll do this. We'll do. That. I had no idea. I was making 10 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. I mean, when I started that, you know, and now I have. I've got employees that are making six figure incomes with me. So um, it's exciting. Um, it's exciting to really focus on a dream, go after it. And more importantly, to help others uh, get their dreams. And, you know, where my guys are buying, my, my workers are buying their first home and buying nice cars and going on vacations and stuff like that. So, you know, I don't really measure my success by my bank account, but. I, I do kind of measure it by how many people I've helped succeed. I dare say if you help six people get what they want in life through a business vehicle, you're going to get what you want. But you got to kind of take your eyes off yourself a little bit, and then uh, things kind of just kick in. And, uh, oh. So I'm excited, man. I'm really excited for the next uh, 12 to 24 months. Awesome. Yeah, it sounds, uh, sounds like you got everything in line to uh, definitely take you to that next level. Uh, what? Charlie, it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you and getting to getting to know you a little bit more um, and yeah, highlighting highlighting what has been uh, beneficial for your business and the growth that it's had so far. 
I'm looking forward to the to working with you and continuing to work with you to get to that that next level. And um, you know, we'll build out all the systems and processes that are needed on the back end, so that when you are ready to retire, you can hand it off to somebody and maximize the uh, uh, the profit that you get uh, for the sale. So excited for excited for that. Really looking forward to it, man. And uh, again, uh, thank you for inviting me. And um, I look forward to the future with you, brother. Absolutely, man. All right. Well, this has been another episode of the Business Growth Accelerator. If you've uh, liked what you heard today, do what everybody tells you to do. Hit that like button. Subscribe uh, for more uh, for more interviews. And if you want to find that hidden money that's in your business that you don't know is there, you should check out my uh, free book, uh, Profit Secrets, the underground, underground Guide to Finding a Ridiculous Amount of Money in your business without spending a dime on ads. The link is in the description below or just go to my website, pkxxenterprises.agency forward slash profits. And uh, here's to your success.